Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, this is something that I've made a lot of over the years. And this one I'm making for my sister. Yes, Sue, this is for you. You wanted a spare one. And uh, they work excellent. I got the idea and kind of patterned it after my... Uh, wood furnace that I have in this shop that I use for 15 16 years to heat and now I go over to the wall and I have this little round thing and I turn it and the room just gets warm all by itself <laughs> magic I guess but this is something that we're gonna venture into and it's a little different for Jim's fix-it shop and I know it's gonna sound strange but Stick with me, watch the video, and you might actually want to make one of these. We're going to build a burning barrel. Now, this isn't just a normal barrel that you burn, throw papers and sticks and twigs. Mine outside right now is burning. Um, I've got a picture of my sister's old burning barrel and if you've ever used one I'm sure yours looks like this eventually it gets built up with unburnt stuff in the bottom and they just keep piling up higher and higher and pretty soon your barrel is about this deep this one will never fill up with unburned papers or sticks, twigs. I burned a bunch of brush in mine yesterday and it is completely empty. 100% of the stuff inside this barrel will burn and then turn into white powdered ash. And that's all you have left. But there's something you have to do to this barrel first. Now I put a line on here about 10 inches, 12 inches from the bottom. Doesn't really matter, just whatever you like. I'm kind of waiting for my batteries to charge up too. I've got to order new ones for these drills because I'm having so much trouble with them. Grief, I can't even get the cutter in here. This, by the way, is a cutter for doing electrical work. You can use a regular drill. This is just a little easier because it cuts in steps. This is made for thin sheet metal. It won't grab like a drill does and rip the hole through. The first thing I did is I put a mark around the barrel so I could tell where to put the tape. I just put a marker and a clamp. You can set it on top of the box. You can do it anywhere you want. But we're going to draw a line around this so we can see it a little better with the tape on here. And this doesn't really take all that long. It works out pretty good. If you don't have a black barrel, you don't really need the light colored tape. You can just draw the line on the barrel. But I got all these barrels from my sister and they're all black. And that's it. Now, I measured the diameter of this barrel. All the way around is six feet. So you want to make a mark. Start over here where the seam is and we'll make a mark right there. Then I took a thin piece of cardboard, anything you got. First time I did it, I used a piece of string. Worked fine. I put marks on this cardboard about every five and a half, six inches. Five and a half works pretty good. Or you could go five. And you want to transfer them marks on the barrel or on this tape. Start out with number three and hold it right there on that seam. 
you've already got a mark. You go around here and you make another mark on these other spots. This is where you're going to drill a hole through the barrel. Now we want to spin this thing around. We want to get three feet around the barrel. Somewhere close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I always say, it don't have to be pretty. It just has to work. Okay, we're basically three feet around. We want to put the marks on there again. Because we're going to drill through the barrel. And we want these marks to somewhat line up. By the way, my furnace that I got the idea of this from burns either wood or coal. So let's see if my batteries are charged up and we'll drill these holes. That's a little easier to lay this thing on the floor so you can get a little more pressure without the barrel sliding across the table. Yeah, we're gonna have to get an electric drill out, I guess. Now, seeing I had it on pause anyway, I drilled most of the holes. I only have one left. It's a little noisy. back up on the bench here. And we'll move you back around. Okay, I got it up on the bench. I pulled some of the tape off. You don't have to worry about it because it's going to burn off anyway. Now you want to get some half inch thin wall conduit and stick it through the hole. and out the other side. I usually leave them sticking out about a half inch. Make a mark on there. Cut it off. I've done enough of these where I know how long to cut the pieces so I can pre-cut. Sometimes it's a little hard to get them through. Now the center one is going to go straight through with no problems. The ones on the outer edges, <clears throat> they're not going to go straight through the barrel through the center. They're going to go on an angle. So what you want to do with your rods or your piece of conduit, stick them in the hole and bend them you want to pull it towards the center one until the, one, the piece on the inside is pointing at the hole on the other side of the barrel. So I need a stand on here. So you're, you're just bending the edge of the barrel a little bit. And then you want to do the same thing for this hole on this side. And it'll slip right through. This one that's closest to the edge, these two holes, you gotta bend them a little bit more. So just put the bar in, look in the barrel, and bend it till it's pointing at the other hole. The 
this is the noisy part. Now I've already got a slot cut on here for the vent. Somewheres, here we go, it's cut right here. And tip this down a little bit. I got it cut here. I cut it across the bottom and I cut it up to two sides. Now it used to be I, I just cut a hole in there, but then rain gets in there. You want to keep a cover to put on top of the barrel. When water gets in there, it's going to turn your powdery ash into clay and it's not going to dump out very good. So I usually bend this up so as water comes down it sheds off a little bit. Now the next part that goes in here is the I guess secret on what makes this barrel work so good. It's a piece of expanded metal. Now I buy this from Harbor Steel. <laughs> Almost said Harbor Freight. I get this from Harbor Steel. A 4x8 sheet of this stuff is $40. I can get 8 barrels out of one sheet. But this is what you need to make this barrel work. And you drop it in side on top of them pipes. That creates a, I guess a bottom, if you want to call it that, that the air can get under your fire and burn it. That's how my wood furnace works. I have a cast iron grate in the bottom of my furnace that I can shake and uh, I guess they make it that way to get the clunkers out if you burn coal. The coal that just doesn't burn, you shake them grates and it falls down to the bottom. But if you're burning wood, all I ever empty out of that wood furnace is powdered ash. Everything burns up. So I tried it with one of these barrels and it works great. Now to anchor the um, pipes to the barrel, <coughs> you can either weld them. In the past, I have drilled holes through the pipe and pounded a roll pin through there, or a cotter key. Anything to keep the pipe from sliding back and forth. On this barrel, I think I'm going to use screws. And I'll show you in a second, as soon as I go get a couple, how we're going to install them. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got one left to do. I'm drilling uh, pilot holes in here for the screws to um, make them go in a little easier. This is a fixture I made, well, back in 19... 76 when I worked at Dresser Industries. It's just a center drilling fixture for realm stock. Works very nice. It's got a finger clamp. Just stick your bar in here. Kind of eyeball the mark you have on it in this large three quarter inch hole. Snap it down and drop your drill bushing in. And it drills exactly on center. And it does have a stop that goes in it if you want to drill uh, holes in a particular location off the end of every piece. didn't act like it went all the way through but I guess it did. I use this once in a while at work for a job we do <clears throat> where we have to drill a cross hole in a, uh, a cutter that they use to put a pin in and then that's what they use to tighten the part with instead of putting wrench flats on it. 
So we'll stick this one back in. Now the key here is getting the screen back in the same way as it was when I marked the uh, pieces of conduit. <clears throat> So that the holes line up in the holes in the expanded metal. And we're just going to throw some sheet metal screws in those holes. And that will hold the metal down. And it will keep the pieces of conduit where they belong so they don't slide out of the barrel. A couple of these has to be moved a little bit so the holes line up. And that's it. We got one in every hole, or one in every pipe. We'll put two in the longer ones a little later. Now we'll stretch out that hole, wherever it is, there it is, for the air vent. Good size screwdriver here. And my squeaky chair. So better drop this camera down a little bit, or at least move it. We're just gonna bend the flap out the best we can. It's not gonna want to bend out very easy because we're on a curve. But it will bend up. Like I said, if you want to, you can bend. You can just cut a hole in yours. But I like doing it this way. Like I said, it sheds the water off doesn't get down inside your barrel. This stuff is hard to bend. You don't need much of a gap. Because once this gets burning, it's really going to draw the air through. And that's about all I bend it out. It's right like that. <clears throat> now, get you a, a shot down inside the barrel. To see what it looks like. It's just got the screen in it. Kind of looks like a grate on a gas grill. Now when I get done burning my barrel, which is right now full of everything I sucked up off of the yard with my snapper yesterday, a lot of pine needles, they're pretty dense, so it takes them a while to burn, uh, pine cones, sticks, twigs, I suck up everything. The only thing I pick up is... Ah. Uh, pieces of limbs that are bigger than my thumb. Everything else, the snapper grinds them up and bags them. 
So as soon as this thing gets done burning, I will uh, take a shot of the inside of that and show you what all this stuff is reduced down to. So uh, I'm going to put you on pause for a while because I don't know how long that's going to be burning out there. Seeing it's raining and it, uh, the rain's kind of keeping this thing from firing up the way it usually does and burns fast. So we'll be back. All right, I think the barrel is about burned out from all the sticks and, and brush I've been burning. Uh, I did try something different on this one. Instead of using the pins inside or the screws to hold everything together, uh, while I was waiting for the fire to burn, I tried welding this. I don't know if you can see it very good, but uh, I just put a spot weld on it both ends of all the pipes and uh, that seems to hold it in there pretty good like I said the barrel out there I'll show you I use roll pins on that one and I've used cotter keys and anything to keep the tubes or the conduit from sliding through the barrel and letting the screen fall it's all you need to do so let's go out and see what that looks like Now this barrel I've been using for probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years. And you can see if I can get it down close enough. You can see the roll pins in my pipes. I think that's actually a better idea. Because then when you go to dump the stuff out of the barrel, the screen will fall out of the way and it'll dump out a lot better. But that's all that's left. <laughs> you can see the snapper sucked up a bunch of gravel out of the driveway but I've been burning all day there's some of the ash that came out and it's just fine powder that's all that's left from this barrel burning a lot of brush for two days And you do want to try to get a barrel with a cover. Because like I said, if it gets full of water, it's going to turn to clay in the bottom of the barrel, and you're going to have a hard time emptying it. We'll run back in where it's a little warmer in there. It's about 36 up here in Michigan today, which really isn't too bad. Like I said, this is not our normal Jim's Fix-It shop, but this barrel is something I've been using for a long time. Uh, I've made a lot of them for friends and family, and they really do work superbly. Uh, I don't care how much you burn or what you burn, even papers, it is totally going to burn and you won't have anything left but dry white ash as long as you keep the cover on so that's it uh, I hope you find this useful or helpful in some way and uh, like I said before stay home and stay safe don't forget to subscribe and uh, work safe have fun and keep on burning <laughs> we'll talk to you later so long